good morning in our previous session we have discussed about nanomaterials so what are nanomaterials and we also discussed the size dependent properties such as surface area and electron uh, electrical properties magnetic properties mechanical and thermal properties so how these properties varies when substances are in their bulk form and how it affects uh, when they are in nanoparticle size so now nanomaterials or nanoparticles and how they are synthesized the different methods of synthesis and let us see different forms so nanoparticles are the substances which the size varies between 1 to 100 nanometers so the diameters as diameter changes they are also called in different forms so the nanomaterials or nanoparticles mainly depends upon the diameter and they are classified accordingly if the particle size varies between 1 to 100 nanometers nanometers in size they are called as ultra fine particles if the size varies from 2500 to 10000 nanometer they are called as coarse particles and if it ranges from 100 to 2500 nanometers they are called as fine particles fine sized particles so nanoparticle research is a thirst area nanotechnology is a thirst area because it finds a wide applications in biomedical optical etc so now let us see so nanoparticles are mainly synthesized by sol gel method precipitation method ke chemical vapor condensation method so let us discuss these methods one by one to start with sol gel method sol gel means so this is synthesized by sol first preparing a sol converting it to gel then getting nanoparticles so the precursor will start with formation of sol the sol will be converted to gel and then by calcination process we're going to get the nanoparticles so what type of uh, uh, nanoparticles can be prepared by sol gel method so metal oxides and temperature sensitive organic and inorganic hybrid materials can be uh, will be preferred to go uh, can be prepared by sol gel method so for example zinc oxide nanoparticles titanium oxide nanoparticles can be synthesized by this method so this sol gel method will start can be uh, uh, will be synthesized nanoparticles can be synthesized by sol gel method by following step preparation of sol conversion of sol to gel aging of the gel removing of the solvent heat treatment that is calcination and finally we'll get the uh, we'll get our nanoparticles if starting with preparation of sol to the preparation of sol the main thing is the precursor or the raw material so anything so in this method metal alkoxide will act as an precursor to synthesize the nanoparticles of metal oxide so the metal alkoxide is dissolved in alcohol and then water is added under acidic or basic or neutral conditions so addition of water leads to hydrolysis in which metal i mean alkoxide ligand is replaced with an hydroxyl ligand that is we get an metal alcohol we get a alcohol when the alkoxide ligand is replaced with hydroxyl implies we get an oh it is an alcohol that is here we have metal oxide precursor which is represented by mohr it undergoes hydrolysis to get moh and then alcohol that is roh we get a metal alkoxide moh and we get an alcohol roh hydrolysis so next conversion of salt to gel this is very very important so here the polycondensation reaction occurs between metal alkoxide moh and then um, uh, and MOR metal oxide so it gives the formation of oxide or alcohol bridge network that is gel that is MOH as discussed that is metal alkoxide reacts with MOR metal oxide to give MOF that is it might be an oxide oxide or it might be an uh, MOH M that is <coughs> bridged with alcohol or oxide so now this mix, uh, this mixture should form a gel. So how it is formed? So this reaction mixture is allowed to continue polycondensation continuously. So what will happen? This gel transforms to a mass of solid mass. So here the polycondensation will be it, this once this reaction occurs, it will be kept for few days where the polycondensation will occur continuously, where the gel will be transformed into mass solid mass. 
So the solid mass, which is which is form of a gel, contains some liquid or a solvent in that. That solvent should be removed. That is our next step. So how is the solvent removed? So here the solvent, if it is volatile, it will evaporate to form a gel. So if we are heating it and removing the gel, it is called as uh, removing the solvent. It is called as zero gel process. And if the solvent is extracted by supercritical contentions, then resulting product is called as aerogel. So for heating and removing the solvent, the water gel we go, go, get it is called as zero gel. And if you are by applying critical condition, super critical condition under high temperature, high pressure, then whatever gel we go, get it is called as aerogel. So next heat treatment, so it is calcination process. So whatever you are going to obtain gel here, it is treated at 800 degrees Celsius to obtain nanoparticles. So thus obtain nanoparticle size ranges from 1 to 100 nanometer. So now, so what is the process it can be represented by? Diagrammatical representation. First precursor, it is converted to sol. The pro sol after dehydration gives you gel gel after calcination gives you nanoparticle. This is a diagrammatic representation of sol gel process. Now let us see the advantages of sol gel process. The sol gel process, the advantages is high purity with good homogeneity can be obtained. Samples can be prepared at low temperature, easy to control the synthesis parameters, so shape, size, everything and simple and an Inex uh, inexpensive equipment. Equipment is very very inexpensive. This is regarding our sol gel method. So next method is precipitation method. So as the method name indicates precipitation means precipitating. So once we precipitate we can by method of precipitation so when you add some agent so what will happen? It will precipitate. So by precipitating, you can prepare what nanoparticles? How it is carried out? So as it says in this method, solid particles are obtained by careful precipitation of their solution. So here metal oxides or metal sulfides or metal nitrates are or metal nitrate uh, nanoparticles can be obtained. So how is it obtained? Let us see. So here, first you are going to Take an inorganic metal salt such as nitrate or chloride or acetate and it is dissolved in water. And dissolved in water, what will happen? We get metal hydrates. So to these metal hydrates, we are going to add precipitating agents such as ammonium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. So as soon as we add these precipitating agents, what will happen? pH will change. The pH will become basic pH. So because of this, what will happen? This causes the condensation of the precursor. Precursor is nothing but whatever salts you have added. So it will condense. It will form the condensation. The cations, whatever are there, they will condense. It might be aluminium or iron or silver, any metals, whatever you have added. So metal nitrate might be aluminium nitrate or you have added aluminium chloride or aluminium acetate. So whatever aluminium added, it will start condensing. So it is aluminium hydroxide you might get. So thus condens uh, that uh, whatever happens, the concentration will start increasing and it reaches a uh, some critical level. So at this concentration, what will happen? The nuclei will form. So as in our uh, uh, it will uh, nuclei will be formed. So nucleus will be initiated and a crystal will grow. That is in our crystal formation how it happens. Similarly, even here the nucleus further grows into particles which gets precipitated. So this precipitate water is obtained, it will be filtered, washed with water, dried and finally it will be heated to very very high temperature. That is around 800 or 800 degrees Celsius. That is calcination. So thus obtained uh, precipitate uh, is called as what? Fine particles are nano particles. So what are the advantages and disadvantages? The process is relatively economical wide range of single and multi component oxide nanopowders can be obtained this, these are the advantages the major disadvantage is the size of the nanoparticles cannot be controlled this is the major disadvantage of precipitation method so we are next the next type of method is chemical vapor condensation so in this method mixture of gases react uh, gas reactants are delivered into a reaction chamber inside the chamber chemical reactions will occur gas molecules 
are induced to put some energy as a resistant heating laser plasma etc the product whatever is performed at the vapor state will get condensed and as deposits of nanoparticles so which are nanoparticle we want we're going to induce that in the form into a gas chamber so in the gas state itself what will happen reactions occur it might be occur in the gaseous state or it may occur in plasma state so we're going to heat it so the products whatever you're going to obtain it will be in the nano size so the byproducts of the reactions will get exhausted so the simple example for this is preparation of silver nanowires using chemical vapor condensation so silver seeds are first generated by heating silver nitrate at 160 degree celsius so in ethylene glycol which serves both as a reducing agent and solvent so the silver uh, glycol ethylene glycol is a reducing agent as, as, as well as a solvent so then the surfactant use this for pvp PP, that is polyvinyl pyridine so if a separate uh, solution of silver nitrate and pvp in ethylene glycol is then added drop wise so to seed the solution highly elongated silver structures will result so first you are going to seed the silver nitrate at 160 degree celsius so then you are going to take the silver nitrate solution and pvp ethylene glycol then you are going to add drop wise when you add drop wise of this pvp what will happen we get a long elongated silver wires in the, in the form of nanoparticles or nano wires so what are the advantages these are flexible can produce wide range of nanomaterials similarly you can get gold or galenium arsenic nanoparticles gold nanoparticles using this vapor condensation method so precursor precursor in this vapor condensation method what are the advantage main advantage is the precursor can be either solid or liquid or gas if you put solid into vapor condensation method it may it will get converted to gaseous state if you put liquid also it will get converted to gaseous state the reaction occurs only in the form of gaseous state but delivered to reactors as vapors so allows formation of doped or multi-component nanoparticles by use of multiple precursors the disadvantage is precursors used are volatile and uh, usually hazardous are extremely toxic so you're not supposed to use volatile or hazardous uh, hazardous uh, precursors so here in this method we're not going to go in depth because in your syllabus are restricted only uh, uh, the process they have never gone into depth if you take an example of this then we can go into depth so they are just briefed what are the uh, uh, precipitation method what is soil gel method and what is chemical vapor condensation method but i have taken example uh, here and there one one example they have not gone in depth they have just briefed what is precipitation method what is soil gel method and what is vapor condensation method so next we will deal with uh, nanoscale materials, uh, materials and uh, taking a uh, fullerene as an example thank you